Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you so much for joining me on The Silburn Show. I've got a fantastic guest, an awesome guest, a lovely guest, and her name is Marcia M. Spence. She's the director of Marcia Publishing House. And um, she's on the right chair, and we're going to talk about many things. Am I correct, Marcia? You are. It's Marcia M. Publishing House. Marcia M. M. Publishing House. You must remember the M. The M? Yeah. So tell me, what does M mean? It means me. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, okay. the M means me. Oh, sorry, you. Me. Oh, right. Yeah. Marcia. Okay, yeah. good. There's lots of Marcia Spences. Yes. But to... If you're Googling me, if you're looking for me, to distinguish me, yes. put the M in there. Fantastic. And you find me. Marcia, well, listen, um, this is long overdue. This is two years overdue, I know. actually. <laughs> yes. I think, I think twice you're on your way to turn back or something. Yeah, yeah, two yeah. Reasons, yeah. yeah. Two years ago, I was on my way. Yes. And then my daughter had a car accident. Yes, she was yeah. pregnant. Yes. So I couldn't come. Yeah. And then the other time, I think I was just nervous. Yes. Oh, come on. You can't be nervous to be on a red chair. But listen, I want to thank you so much for coming on yeah. because, um, you know, you have an interesting life, um, mm. a, a very interesting life and a, a very interesting journey. Mm. And many people see people smiling and radiant, mm. but, and they don't know the story behind there. Yes. You know, can you divulge? Can you divulge? Because wow. I've, I've just a little bit top here. Sexually abused when five, witnessed domestic abuse at home, transient lifestyle, subject of racism, um, mental health issues, drug and alcohol, and crazy partners. Mm -hmm. Am I correct? Crazy partners. Yes. Oh, that sounds terrible. <laughs> yes. I mean, but yeah. it's, it's a reality. Mm -hmm. Tell us, I mean, what do you want to say? Okay. Um, wow. Um, I'm a woman. Yes. Black woman. Mm. Um, Jamaican heritage. Yes. Um, I'd say I'd live, I've lived a life of that many women live. Yes. Um, however, I think that I've lived a life that's had um, lots of successes mm -hmm. alongside a lot of low points or a lot of um, catastrophes yes. and calamities, <coughs> I would say. Mm -hmm. So my starting point definitely was um, living in a household, a domestic abuse household, which... Yeah. Um, impacted on my mental health. Mm -hmm. um, so I was always a very nervous, anxious child yes. and adult. Mm -hmm. So my dream, and, and as I speak, I'm, I'm more or less um, talking about my, um, my memoirs that I wrote called yes. Geraldine's Pearl. And so within my memoirs, I speak about um, my desire for a peaceful, straightforward life. Yes. Um, because of living um, quite a nomadic um, lifestyle because of domestic violence yes. and having to move just all over the country um, fleeing where my mother was fleeing domestic yes. abuse mm -hmm. um, and so my desire as an adult was to be married have my children have yes. a nice settled home life yes. But that wasn't to happen. Um, my um, husband at the time, um, he initially was diagnosed as bipolar, although when we were very young, so we married very young, we married mm. at 18, mm. I had my first child at 19, mm. my second one at 21, and we had a lovely relationship. However, he was diagnosed with a, a number of mental health issues. So initially it began, um, and this is back in the 80s, uh, yeah. the 80s yeah. as it being uh, cannabis psychosis and, mm. and that type of illness. Different type of, uh, yeah. So he was diagnosed with that and was sectioned multiple times mm. um, as, a, as a very, very young man. Um, but then as life moved on, we, we had... Um, you know, quite a settled, um, settled time, yes. um, both of us working and raising our children. And then at the age when he was 27, again, he, he um, became very ill mm -hmm. with a bipolar illness, um, bipolar mood disorder, which then just um, basically just devastated my life mm -hmm. and the life for my children, yes. um, which meant that... Um, that whole image, that thing that yeah. I wanted as a child, although I'd been striving for it, it just didn't materialise. Mm. And then my life has just continued like that, really. Mm. But alongside that, you know, I'm, I'm educated up to master's level. Yes. I'm, a, a, I'm a qualified social worker. I have um, leadership qualifications, uh, postgraduate level. And I've um, 
carved out a career working with children and families where yes. I was a strategic manager for the local authority. Yes. So alongside managing um, the things that were happening personally, um, having to go backwards and forwards to psychiatric units f with my ex-partner and so on, and for my ex-partner, um, you know, I continued to, to strive. Yes. But what I recognise, I mean, we're talking, about, we're talking about events that were like 25 years ago yes, yes. now, you know. And um, I, uh, what I recognise now, I'm, I'm 50, I turned 50 this year, wow. so, um, so pivotal, you should, you should lie on pivotal, television. pivotal, pivotal, yeah. You shouldn't lie on television. Oh, Silborn. Well, it's, I, it's only, I only said 50 so that you could say that to me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, so it's, um, so I'm at a stage where, um, I've been at a stage, I'd say from the age of 45, really, of, yes. of, of um, finding me and exploring what I really want to do with my life, because mm -hmm. at 45 I left work and decided to um, just just do things that I wanted to that do. I didn't want to do. just be going to the the strategy meetings, board meetings, this meeting, that meeting, planning, yeah, yeah. planning um, services and not having direct access to people, you know, just um, leading people. I wanted to, I suppose, one of the things was get back into my community, but also to to live and have mm. have more freedom and so through that journey i realized that um a lot of the things in terms of studying mm. working hard achieving was my default was mm. my my almost not a defense mechanism a coping mechanism yes. for me so i recognized as a child although we had um we moved around schools I was always in the top sets. Yes. So despite having to kind of lose friends, make new friends or not have any friends in school, um, the thing that kept me going was just this, this, this inner thing that's just there yeah. to keep striving well, and you're, keep you're moving adapting. forward. Adapting. Yeah. yeah, adapting, but also um, because you um, move around. So we moved, I went to eight different primary schools yeah. So because we moved around so much, um, it was also that um, in terms of my social skills or my, my ability to find resilience within myself, mm. I was able to do that because I would leave friends, you know, I'd spend time with some friends mm. and then, you know, at a, in a split second as well, well because of the violence, yes. if, if, if it, there was a decision that we were going to move, then we would just move. I could get up and put my uniform on, yeah. but we're actually moving to another city. Mm. And so, um, although I know it must have been traumatic for us, um, I believe that for me myself, it mm. developed that um, lots and lots of strengths in terms of um, being able to just be self-directed, self-determined, and to um, just to continue to pursue to yeah. achieve. Yeah. So. That's a bit of my background in terms yeah. of childhood. Yeah. Um, more recently, um, I, I mean, I've done, there's been so much yeah. I mean, <laughs> happened. I, I mean, one of the things which yes. you mentioned about um, the adaptable and moving mm -hmm. from different places to different places, city yes. to city, um, but it didn't break you to a certain extent. It actually built you. It, yes, I'd say that. Because um, you were able in, to adapt. Yeah, I would say that, yes, and I think that that was because, most definitely, yeah. it actually equipped me yes. with additional skills. So I would not be reliant on necessarily on other people. Yeah. I would be... The other thing for me that yeah. I recognised, especially when I wrote my book, was how strong my faith and my relationship with God yes. is. Yes. Because um, that, in fact, is what has kept me going. Yes. And so, and, and that is from, that's been instilled since I was a very, very small child. Yes. And so as I reflect, um, that's really it, really, mm. that um, everything that's happened in my life, despite multiple challenges, which I haven't yeah. even touched on in this conversation yeah. at all, is that um, I'm just being led um, on a journey of, yeah. of purpose, really. Yes. And, and, and do you find that you're finding your Nemo? You're yes. finding your purpose? Oh, yes. yes. Well, you're walking it, isn't I'd it? I'd say I'm definitely um, in my purpose. Yes. And the reason I say that is because um, what I do now, so I wouldn't even say that mm. I work, or people might say, 
what do you do for a living? Mm. And I'll say, well, I don't do anything for a living. I live. Yeah. And so um, what has happened for me is that I was very unwell. Um, well, I became very unwell physically um, in 2014. Yeah. Um, and I was diagnosed with a, a neurological and nervous system illness mm -hmm. that causes severe pain yes. to go through my face. And um, that was hard because yeah. I'm a bit of a, I don't know, I'm one of these people that is really highly motivated mm. and, and quite dutiful as mm -hmm. well. Or I am a person that prides myself in walking my talk. Yes. So if I yeah. say I'm going to do something, I will do it, yes. you know, I will do it, even if it may not happen at the time, I may suggest, but it will happen. Yes, yes, yes. And um, although I was ill, I remember at that time, it was very, very severe. I mean, it's an illness mm. called trigeminal neuralgia, yeah, tri yeah. which means that, um, which they also call the suicide disease. Because, along, because the pain is, they say it's the most severe pain known to human medicine. Wow. Yeah, and that's in your face. So I get that on the left side, yeah. my best side that your I wanted side. to show. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so I I was diagnosed with that in 2014, and I I um, it changed my life mm. completely. Mm. Um, that experience of um, pain, yes, and there being nothing but pain, and I'd never ever been physically ill ever yeah. before, but there was nothing existed but pain. pain. And so I know particularly, you know, for 30 days, there were 30 days, the 30 day period when there was nothing but pain, mm. as simple as that. Yeah, to it take just, um, morphine and all those yeah, sort of things? I had to take what they prescribed for me is a combination of anti-epileptic and anti-convulsion yeah. drugs. And you can take, but even opiates don't, because it's a nervous system mm. pain then even, even some of the opiates don't necessarily touch yes, yes. the pain. You know, some people are given morphine. Yes. And um, so, yeah, so I had a combination of medication. So I was taking probably about 24 tablets a day. I, know, mm. I remember it was 160 or something mm. per week. And, um, but it took a while for the pain relief, pain to be relieved, you know. But when I came out of that pain, the first day that I woke up and I didn't feel any pain was wow. just absolutely awesome. Mm. And so um, I feel for me, um, that was the beginnings of an, my, the, an early appreciation of the very, very, very simple things. In life. In life. Yeah. Just being pain free. Yeah, just being pain free. Pain free. Wow. Seriously, pain free. And um, so I learned a lot. So with that illness, I also recognized that it was almost like a gift because it was a mm. gift to me in the sense that it gave me knowledge that I didn't have before. Mm. Insight. So, yes. And then as I reflected on my life in general, I realized that many of the experiences that I have had have all been gifts to give me insight. Yes. So, you know, um, I'd never experienced um, domestic abuse myself yes. until my second marriage. Yes. And then I did. And then I got out of that. Mm. And I have to say, it's an, it, it just may sound strange, but I'm, I'm thankful for that experience because mm. I have that experience. Or simply put, yeah. uh, or simply put, it's not that you're wishing it on anyone. Not at all. Or you're, not, or you're wishing for it to come back to no, you. No, not at all. But you appreciate the knowledge that you yes. have acquired. Yes. That's the best way. We're trying yes. to be polite, diplomatic. Most, no, stillborn, yeah. where I am at yeah. in my life, because um, it, there's, there's a catalogue of things. My, my son was recruited into a gang mm. and we went through huge trauma. My, my daughter had experiences of, of trauma because of these whole things that happen on the road and mm. through gangs. I supported a partner who has mental health issues, severe mm. psychotic mental health issues. Yes. You know, we've had to pick him up out of the street. He stops buses, he walks around. And even up until last year, this time last year, he was a skeleton because mm. he was addicted to crack, yes. cocaine, alcohol and 
he was ready, we were ready for him to die. Yeah. So, so and, and I'm still only touching on many of the thing, yes. experiences that I have. But alongside that, um, I achieve things. Yes. But I achieve things, you yeah. know, and the, the, the blessing, the work, the thing that I do now with my life is that even every client, every person that yes. I come across, it's like, it may seem like I promote, but I don't really. People just gravitate towards recommend. You. People yeah. come, they're drawn. I, I connect with them. Um, I sat on the when I was coming to London. I, I got on the train, and there were two women there, and I, I, we just ended up sitting at the same table. Mm. And the woman said to me, "I was thinking about you yesterday. You're the book woman." Wow. And then we sat at mm. the same table on the train and she said I've been planning to contact you wow and we just wow. randomly wow. Wow. sat at the same table mm. um, I can't even explain but but so so I don't know what I'm actually saying to you so no, no, what no, I'm saying to you sense. though is sense. that this journey yes. so we're here to talk about me publishing um, and 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 what's happening with birthing yes these yes, books yes these yes. these stories yes I know that one of the things growing up because I grew up and I could I could see a lot of injustice so yes. I grew up witnessing um, unfairness for children for women mm. and I was the type of child who um, wanted to stand up and say this is wrong, yes, you know. Yes. I remember my cousins telling me they loved to be with me because I was the only one that stood up to the adults. Mm. And so, and even at school, I was the only one that would probably stand up. To, I would stand up to teachers. I would so stand a, so up. Firebrand. Yeah. Mm. Yes. And um, fierce sitter. Yes. <laughs> oh Lord, fierce dear. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, and you can't yeah. get a word in. You got to be yourself yeah. with me. Yeah. You know, and people. Yeah. Yeah. I am. But, yeah, so, so one of my, part of my mission, mm. um, especially when I started, like I went into broadcasting, so I went into radio and I was doing, I do women's empowerment yes. work. Yes. And what I was finding, and, and no, what I knew as a leader, so previously I worked as a leader, mm -hmm. and I was a senior leader in the local authority, um, but I was struggling with life, with yes. all these life issues yes. were beating me down. So despite being qualified, be despite being experienced mm. in my field, I struggled at work yeah. because um, home life was just so dramatic. Yeah. Yeah. I worked in an environment where um, I was probably um, one of a handful of black people um, I was one of the youngest managers at that mm. point in, in that role. And it was very difficult to go into work yes. and be real about... I've just probably walked out of a situation mm. um, at home where, you know, my son's friend was shot and murdered, mm. you know, and then have to go into the office, have to mm. go in and lead my team and... Yeah. Um, I can't even talk to them you, you have, about you, the realities of, yeah, my, of, 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 yeah. of my experience. It's like you've got to be strong for everyone. Yeah. And you've got to present that yes. face when at the same time... I was struggling. You're struggling. Yeah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, it's interesting listening to the, the first part here with Marcia um, Spence. And it's going on a journey. We're going to go back on a journey. After we come back from a break, we're going to show that she's got some babies as well. Very interesting. She's got mm -hmm. some babies. See you in a bit. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the show. And I've got Marcia M. Spence. But if you look, you'll see that she's joined by others. Now, we're not talking about the movie Others. We're talking about her babies. Babies! Last time I saw her, she wasn't round. But guess what? Yes, there are babies. Because guess what? Marcia M. Publishing House is a house which create these wonderful writers and these authors. But... I'm not going to say anything more because I might tongue tie and twist up myself as I can see what I'm saying. Marcia, what's going on? What's oh, going on? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm back. Yeah. Yeah. With some of my babies. Yes. Yeah. The books are the babies. These are the mothers. Yes. Now, interesting. <laughs> yeah. Interesting, Marcia. Um, 
we, we started off early and we, mm -hmm. we got a bit into the journey of where you are My at. Mm -hmm. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, we have to do another show, like a full one hour to really get into Marcy. But for today, for the purpose of today, I want to talk about the Marcy and Publishing House and where okay. all did it birth about, yes. Yeah, so um, earlier on in part one, we were talking a bit about um, some of my health issues. Yes. So I had a period of time where I was ill with uh, neurological illness, mm. as well as I had anxiety and depression. And um, it was a period where, um, because I was ill, I was, I was at home and um, I'd already written a book. Yes. And w one of my experiences from writing my book was that um, actually I wrote about my life and so I became really vulnerable. Yes. And not only that, vulnerable because of sharing my story, but Feel also... A bit exposed. Yes, very. Mm. But also the journey of just becoming an author because it is, it was transformational for me. Yes. Although I'd been on radio and things like that before and I was well known, when I did wrote my book, it just took me to a, a completely different place. Yes. And um, which I know one of my one yes. of my <laughs> authors, you know, will mm. understand that as well. Yes. In the sense that suddenly you're in the public eye, you're being asked to do this, to do that, mm. go on. Um, it was a whirlwind of interviews and people commenting on your story, on yes. your life, yes. and um, which was phenomenal. Mm. Mm. But it came. It was highs and lows. Yes. And it was a very, very lonely place as well, because I think um, writing a book is, is like self-actualization. Mm. You know, for many people, that's the, one, of the, one of the top things on their list. I'd love to write a book. Write a book Will yes. I ever write a book? So when you do that, then um, it places you at a place almost, and I'm going to say this, of, of envy. Mm -hmm. that people will appreciate and will admire because I admire anyone who has that discipline and commitment to yeah. write a book. Um, but it also places you in a vulnerable place because mm -hmm. you've achieved something that a lot of other people haven't. So it's a bit of humility at the same time. Yeah, and it, um, you can feel quite isolated. So that's yes. what I went through. Yeah. And so um, after that, um, I say I was at home, I was going through a period where I was physically unwell, but mm. also psychologically, emotionally, I was quite vulnerable. And basically, um, that's all I could do was get my laptop and um, liaise with people, help people with their books and, and write myself. So you were just, you were just helping people yeah, after you wrote yeah. your book, you were just helping yeah. people along one, the way. One, I went to um, an awards event, a women's um, awards event in, in Croydon, actually, the Lift Effects. Mm. And, um, and I was asked, I, I, I'd won an award there um, mm. a, a, year, a year or so before, which was the um, Star of All Stars yeah. for Extraordinary Women. And I was at that event to crown the, um, the person that was awarded that award that yeah. year. And then after I crowned her, she said, um, I want to republish my book. Yes. Would you, and I said, well, you could do it, you could do it. Mm. And she goes, no, I, want, I need help. Could you do it for yes, me? Yes. And that's how it began. And then I did her book. But what also happened at that time, and this is like what I was talking to you about in part one, mm. about things just being divine and just happening. Mm. I also happened to be sitting at a table and there was Pamela Haynes yes, yes. at the table. So I'll introduce Pamela Haynes. Yes. Um, I'd say, I call her my toddler yes. right now. <laughs> she's one of the, you yes. know, she's a baby. This, the, this book came out, um, it's been about a year now yes. since this book has been out. But I met Pam about 18 months before the book came out, at the table on that day. Mm -hmm. So, and that's where it was born really, that I said, let me, let me help you. So I published that book, then I published another one for someone wow. else. So, so, so Pamela, Miss yeah? um, Haynes, Loving the Brothers, what is the journey like um, from what Marcia said and to, you, you seem like you're the first one that you pushed up. Well, I, <laughs> um, I saw, I met Marcia at the event, yes. the Glamorous. We were wearing white. Yes. It was a white event. Yes. And um, she had a pile of Geraldine's Pearl, which is her mm. book next to her. And um, I said to her, you know, you know, one day I'm going write to um, write a book as mm. well. We swap details, and one thing about Mars series is that she's very driven. Mm -hmm. So she sets quite strict um, deadlines. deadlines. I was sharing a joke with the other authors <laughs> earlier that when she agreed a deadline for me to hand my manuscript in, 
and she was just about to send it off for all the other bits to be done to yeah. it and I submitted sneakily submitted another 800 oh, yeah. words. Eight. <laughs> um, was it 800? What about or thereabouts? 8,000 8, words. 8,000 right. <laughs> <laughs> 8, yeah. words you know. Which, which messes up the whole process yeah. Yeah. in terms of yeah. how, you, how you do design your cover and things yeah. like that. And um, I knew she was going to be cross, so yeah. I didn't bother yeah. um, convey that to to her or anything. So that smile wasn't but she be was, um, you know, but she was accommodating. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we wouldn't say anything. No, no, no. She was accommodating. She sorted it out yeah. Um, yeah, for me. Yeah. I said to her, "I promise you that that's it now, because the characters would keep me awake at night mm -hmm. and say, but I haven't finished my story yet. I haven't finished mm -hmm. telling you yeah. everything that went down.' And because she's another author, yeah. she respects the fact that that can happen yeah. sometimes as well. She appreciates writer's block yes. and some of the struggles mm -hmm. that I've had along the way in terms of being able to produce this wow. alongside wow. You know, a full-time job and so mm -hmm. on. So Open Doors, um, Miss Tanya Coley, mm -hmm. yes. um, did, did you find at times feeling isolated and lonely? Yes, I still do actually because mm. it's, it is a lonely journey as Marcia said and it's, it is lonely but you know you're doing it for a purpose and yeah. when you know your why it, that will keep yeah. you going yeah. so that's yeah. really important. Mm. So, Marcia, what was the interaction and how did you get on to Tanya? Wow, now with Tanya, oh, this was one days. of my... Oh, oh. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> do you hear I'm going to turn around to Tanya. I'm especially turning around <laughs> so I can show my best side. But anyway, yeah, but with Tanya, with, with this particular baby, this was one of those, you know, when um, women talk about they didn't even have to push. Was, mm. The baby was just out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's what's <laughs> Tanya. Yeah. Tanya... She wrote her book in six weeks. Wow, yes. We published in three months, yeah. probably. Mm -hmm. And um, she was a bestseller within two weeks yes. or a week of the book coming out. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's just continued like that. So that's, mm -hmm. been, that's mm -hmm. been the journey. We had a fantastic... She had her actual launch quite a bit later than when the book was published. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we had a phenomenal, inspirational... It was absolutely a beautiful, beautiful... Yes evening yeah wow. so this baby boy we did everything you know we did everything um, <laughs> extra fast pace yeah, yeah, with yeah, this yeah. one yeah. <laughs> and, and then Miss Pellington mm. Olive Pellington <laughs> yeah. other than wanting wine and vodka uh, yes. <laughs> what, what's, what's her story then well I'm still actually I'm still carrying this one we're still, <laughs> getting, ready. Yeah, we're still yeah. getting ready to deliver yes, um, yes but she's having five yes so five books one time. Path. Yeah. The Path, the path, path to, to the path series. Two. And so we've been working together for since April. Since April. Since April. Mm -hmm. The books are ready. Mm -hmm. um, we're just, what we're doing with um, Olive is we're also being very strategic about um, the marketing of her books, yeah. especially because there's, you know, there's, there's the specialist in the sense that they're targeting teenagers, yes. parents, yes. educators. Yes. Um, people who work with young people so we're doing quite a bit of work on thinking about um, how we're packaging and marketing yeah. this whole box set yeah. of so, books. Yeah. So, so mm -hmm. Olive, it, it seemed like you She's a difficult child. Yeah. <laughs> well I was, I was going to say you're, you're, you're a project child because yes. it seems like yeah. what Marcia, what you're doing with her is setting us a, a precedent as to how you can do all those with these five books. Yes. At the same time. But I it? think with each, um, yeah. because with Pam, yes. Pamela is our first fiction writer. Right. So the majority of our books are, um, are non fiction. Yes. Um, we have a number of memoirs and we have um, other um, non fiction, like educational mm. books. Yes, yes. So, so with Pam, She's our, uh, she's our fiction ambassador, yes. you could say. Mm. Yes. Mm. And again, with Olive, because even the business itself, we are only kind of like two years old, mm -hmm. you know. And yet, I mean, in the last year, I think we're looking at about 27 yeah. books, which 20. is an enormous amount, you know, of, wow. of, of books to produce. And um, so we are growing. We mm -hmm. are learning with yeah. each author that we work with and each genre as yeah. well. Yeah. And so, where we're moving into now, so yeah. Olive is one of the people that's yeah. about young people. So, so Olive, tell us about your journey then with the, I mean, you're, everybody's got one book, but you're, <laughs> you're doing five. Yeah. <laughs> if you're going to do it, do it big. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, so yeah, five books, but 
being with Marcia and publishing house, it's made it a lot easier yeah. because I can work very, very closely with Marcia. We can plan what we're going to do, how we're going to do it, how we're going to do it next. You know, when it comes to actually putting the books together, yeah. making sure that they are readable for my readers. Because again, if you think about it, my main readers are going to be teens. Yes. So the books need to be accessible. Yeah. You know, she was really, really influential in, in putting this together and, and having it in such a form yeah, we that... We made changes, didn't we? Because we made a lot of changes, we did, yeah. Uh, we did produce the books um, a, a few months ago. Yeah. But... It just wasn't, and, and we will test them out. What we'll do is, as well, mm. we've tested it out, like with some teenagers and parents, and mm -hmm. they were like, "This print too small." Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -mm. yeah. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Right. So, so then we, we we changed it. You know, again with Pam's, the book goes. People get to we give them out to reviewers and things for people to mm. read and come back. So with Pam's, as she was developing her man manuscript, um, people would read and say, "Hold on." What happened here? This, yeah. we need a bit, this, a this. Hanging. So then again, yeah. that then informs the author and then the author can go away and develop it, the mm. story mm. further, mm. you know. You are saying? Yeah. Sorry. Okay, now, now that's interesting. So now Marcia um, mm -hmm. and Publishing House, mm -hmm. I, I can see the base now where you're going. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what, what I actually was going to ask, and it's a silly question, but it's, you know, like you see a big building and I yeah. see the big M, you know, your logo there. Yeah, man. That's what Two I M's. see. That's what I see, Marcia, Wonderful. Actually. You know, and I believe Good. that we've got to dream big. Yeah. But also, one of the things I keep talking about is that it's so important that we package our life, package our story. Yes. And by packaging our story, we are leaving a legacy for our children, children, it's children. exactly that. You know? That's the reason. I mean, for me, when I wrote Geraldine's Pearl, which was my memoir, yeah. that very much recognises um, generations of women in my life. So my grandmother and her sisters and so mm. on, my mother and her siblings, and obviously myself and, um, and my daughters. And I recognise that um, that's my grandmother's legacy. You know, her name was Geraldine, mm. and there's a whole story behind that as well. Um, but not only that, you know, recognising something that Pam and I were talking about earlier, just about that we are so good at, as we always say, you know, the oral, oral history. So yes. I know so much about my family because of what they've, people have told me. Um, but I also believe that we need, our children and our grandchildren need to be able to read yes. our stories. So yes. that is vitally important. Um, but, but again, um, the other, so for me, and in terms of my mission in, mm. in the work that I'm doing, is exactly that because I, I'm an empowerment coach and a yeah. confidence builder. Yeah. So part of my um, whole ethos with this service is that um, people say they can't write. Yeah. You know, I challenge them to say, you can, you, can. you could, yes, we can. Yes, and let can. us help you do that. Wow. You know, so we have another one of our authors, um, for example, Yannick. Mm. She 100% was never going to write. Mm. And now she's on to her third book. You know. What, what was that moment from mm. not going to write, can't write? What is it that tipped them over the edge? I think, I think one of the things is seeing that it's possible. Yes. So it's very much uh, environmental because even for myself I've always wanted to write, be an author yes, yes. you know I grew up around books books was everything mm -hmm. to me and I wanted to be a writer but then there was a day when I went to I was actually on the radio and I went to interview yes. some authors and I walked into the room and it was full of female authors and I just felt that this is the place that I belong mm -hmm. and it was from that day so something it, it was again just about divine timing. Yes, yes. I walked in, I felt that I was in a room of queens, mm -hmm. but I also felt I was one of those queens, yes, yes. you know. And then I went away and wrote, and um, yeah, and, and then it, the rest is history, really, you know. Two years. Yes. It's two years of my publishing. Publishing, yeah. I, I self I self published yes. my own book yes. in 2015, so you could say three years. Mm -hmm. I've been I've been in publishing. Yes. and learning and growing. Um, we've made a mark. I mean, I'm based in um, Birmingham mm -hmm. and um, I have a lot of clients in London. I have clients across the country. Mm -hmm. um, Olive is actually from Dorset. When I yes. met Olive to yes. begin, Dorset. Tanya's from Manchester. We have clients in Liverpool. Yeah. We have clients all over the place. And, and, yeah. and ladies and gentlemen, you can go on to Book and Band to Facebook page. 
Yeah. Can they join you like that or you have to private? Yeah, there's a, a group. Uh, there's, there is a, it's a closed group. Yeah. Um, if you are a writer or if you are, um, if, you've, if you're a reader of our books, mm. you're welcome to join. Mm -hmm. If you're a writer yourself, you're welcome to join. Because you need the feedback from people as well, isn't yes, it? Yes, yeah. And, and then what we do is because we do, um, I do, um, off the, some of the mm. members, sorry about the chair there. Yeah. No, that's right. <laughs> it was that's the right. chair. Yeah, it was the chair, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So for some of our members as well, um, they, they volunteer to be readers, so people within the group will test books yes. and then give feedback. So you can yeah. join that. We do have a, um, we have, we're on Instagram, the book business is on Instagram, mm. and we've got Marty M Publishing House on Facebook yes. as well. We've got a website, um, and we run networking events around the country. Okay, yeah. on books and everything like that. Yeah, it's all about books, everything I do, is all centred around books now. Mm. Um, another thing that we do is um, people who are in business, we work with you on your lead generator books yeah. as well. So yeah. if you want to establish yourself as an authority in your field, what I do, um, because I'm already a, a coach, so I will also work with people um, before the books come out mm. to look at how the book fits to your whole brand. Mm -hmm and then um, work to develop the book and then moving towards um, promoting mm. the books and promoting people's yeah. brands, individual uh, brands. Yeah. Uh, Ms. Cole, Tanya, do you find that by having the book opens another door, a platform again to reach out to others, a book as a base now? Yes, it definitely, mm. definitely, because with Open Doors, what has mm. happened is I've gone into personal development yes. coaching and then from there, I've then done mm. personal development programs and developing people in whatever sphere. It doesn't have to be, I want to write a book, I want to do a business. Mm. It's developing their confidence, their self-esteem, wanting to do various things. And that's what I help people do. So, yeah, it has opened many doors. Yeah. Excuse the pun. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, Marcia and I were in um, um, Dublin um, not that long ago as yes. well, where I was invited to be a guest speaker. Um, at a women's summit, yes. um, which I'm very pleased about. So I have launched myself as a public speaker okay. on domestic abuse issues, on my writing journey yes. from idea to publication. And that's the um, base because you've got the book there as a base, a platform where you can propel from. Absolutely. I, I, I had two choices, yes. either write a master's or write a book. Really? And doing a master's or yeah, <laughs> yeah, and I think that by far doing the um, writing the book has opened far more yes. doors for me than yes. um, just having another qualification. Yes. Yes. Do, do you think that, Marcy, that there's too many books out there? Everybody's writing a book. I know. Tell me. There are lots and lots and lots of books. I don't think there'll ever be too many books, yes. Yes. but I hear what you're saying yeah. that many people are writing. But I believe that they're necessary. Yes. And they're necessary for multiple reasons. Yes. I think writing is necessary for the writer. Yes. Um, you will have a story to tell. You also want to achieve something. I mean, what it takes to write a book is, mm. is, is absolutely a lot of discipline yes. and focus. And it displays, a, it, it demonstrates a lot about the individual mm. to achieve yes. completing yes. a book, you know. So um, just for that alone, that experience of that achievement, even if you just wrote a book and did that, mm -hmm. that, that that's necessary. But, but I believe that we all, we're all here for a purpose, aren't yes, we? And we yes. all have a message. And so, you know, Pamela Haynes, there's Tanya Coley, there's Olive Pellington, mm. there's Marcia M. Spence. We're all writing, but, and we may have similarities, but we will, there will be nuggets in everybody's yes. story. Because everybody's different. Yeah. Everybody has their different USP. Yes. Their different DNA, yeah. their different blueprint. I always say, not everybody thinks the same and stuff like that, you know? Yeah. If I could just challenge you, I don't yeah. think there's enough books. And I want to encourage Brilliant. women yeah. out there to write their own stories. Yes. Definitely. You know, for too long we've had Chaucer, we've had Shakespeare, Clinton we've had Bones. everything else. You're <laughs> yes. around, you yeah. know, they've been around for centuries Charles. and generations. And I think yeah. it's true. Time. Party boys. We need to redress <laughs> the balance. And yeah. what I like about uh, Marcia M. Um, publishing house is that 
all the authors support each other. Yeah. 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 So, you know, when we know that there's a True. book launch, we try and support, you know, I am one mm. of the reviewers of yes. um, Jeanette Barrett's yeah. books. Um, you know, when Olive okay. needs some advice, we're like a little hub of yeah. information right, right, and right. support. So it's time that we need to redress the balance, yeah. get more black women yeah. and black men mm. yes. writing their own stories and, yeah. and, and saying their own narratives. Yes. This is the core. Yes. We need some men. Yeah, the question I want to ask you, that, that's a good question. <laughs> Are there, what, what is like with men writers? Yeah. It's interesting. Is it? um, mm. I, like we are working on a, on a book for a man at yeah. the moment um, and we do get inquiries from men. I think that, I'm not sure what is happening with the men. I, the men don't... in terms of this, this business anyway. Um, but in, in general, when I'm observing um, other of the kind of, um, the other publishing houses around me, I'm not seeing as many black men, men. Yes. as um, black women, you know, so I don't know, I'm not sure what it is, mm -hmm. if it's about priorities. You think it is because they don't want to feel too vulnerable and exposed? Well, there is that huge mm -hmm. element of vulnerability. Feeling naked, yeah, in a sense, yeah. figuratively speaking. We launched, we published a book in, um, that I compiled, a collaborative book, um, in March, where we had, we had a big launch event in May. Yes. And we had a number of men attend that, and it, but that was just women in that mm. book. But then they came away saying, we want to do this. So they mm. felt that feel-good factor that the women experience. I think what, what I probably need to do yes. um, in terms of just looking at, at, at my publishing house is that I need to, I need to chase some men. And then get them yeah. as key prototypes. You didn't get that, did you? I need to chase some men. <laughs> 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 and using as prototypes to yeah. also pull yes. in others as yes. well. So the, the thing is, um, I also feel that, um, you know, because editing, the cover designs, all of this costs money. Yeah. So when we're working together, you know, women, I think, are ready to invest. But what I've learned also is um, with a number of the women that I work with, their husbands are with them. Yes. Absolutely supporting them. Yes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. In fact, that, that is actually, um, it's either their husband or son yes. is supporting them yes. to move forward. So I wouldn't even say, even though the women are writing, mm. I'd say that their sons and their, the males in their lives are still are part of the process. Yeah. Now that, that's very interesting because I believe in some of the four words they talk about giving it, um, yes. speaking about their family was being yes. that support. And I'm one person who is very supportive of writing our own stories, writing our own narratives. And I use an example of that sociology book where they talked about um, Caribbean men are, doesn't take care of yes. their family and all those sort of things. Um, whether some of it may be true, but it was too broad brush. Yeah. And therefore, what that simply says, I said, so what? They're going to write it. What we need to do is counteract it by writing our own story. That's so right. I'm not going to That's be the right. one. I'm, I'm not the type that will say, let's demonstrate and mash down Babylon one more time. I'll, I'll always say, let's yes, create our own absolutely. books. Yeah. Yeah. Create our own books yeah, and stuff yeah, like yeah. that and yeah. do it. So I, I, I've got one in the making for next year, Marcy, mm -hmm. just to let you know. Okay, so I may I have to come on the show and for you to interview me on yeah, that man. book. <laughs> <laughs> you, mean, you, may, you, you need to come and see me anyway about the book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, um, but ladies and gentlemen, ladies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, well, let's hope in the future we'll, when you come back again yeah. with more guests, we'll yeah. have some gentlemen, so I can say ladies and gentlemen, yes. you know. Yeah. But I want to thank you so much, Marcia. But any yeah. last word from any of you guys? Uh, you said today's, you wanted to say today was special, isn't it? At the same yeah. time, celebration. Yeah, we're celebrating. Yeah. You know, we have achieved. Yeah, we have. But we have achieved so much yes. this year. And it's a we, I'm saying we because um, it is about we. Yes. Um, for me, every book, you know, I spoke to somebody yesterday who was interested in signing with us and I said, every book that I work in, I believe in it and love it. It's yes. like it's my own. I'm not going to treat, you know, I just treat it and yeah. believe in it and put into it as much as I, yeah. I can do as if it's my mm. own. And I will do that with everyone. I'd prefer to do mm. that. I'd prefer to work with less people and do that yeah. than um, 
than just just grab people mm. and, and not put that um, so you've got to put the care in, it. in yeah yeah, yeah. We've been very busy. It's, it, there have been times when we've been so busy with the work mm -hmm. that um, there's been times when I just can't be accessible. So moving forward for me is, I just want to, we've just, I think it was just like a bit of a victim of our own success for yes, a period. Yes, yes. That we were so busy that we didn't necessarily have the capacity for a period. Fantastic. But for next year, moving forward, um, we've kind of worked out the e e equilibrium now. Yes where we'll have that time to sell, sell, sell the books as well as mm. developing the books fantastic, as well. Fantastic, fantastic. And mm -hmm. um, Tana, just... Olive, Olive you mentioned mm -hmm. something, something in your book about care. Mm. Care, repeat that quote again. I want yeah, to say the quote is a John Maxwell quote, and yeah. it says that people don't, don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And that is yeah. the same situation, mm. right? What you wanted to say right yeah. there. If people know it's that true. you care, I, which I do. you know, and that is really awesome. Um, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you so much for joining us on the show. And as you can see, um, the birth of something big, mm. uh, wanting some men to come in to make it mm. bigger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, I've drawn it, Marcia um, Spence, the director of um, Marcia M. Publishing House, uh, Miss Pamela Haynes, uh, Miss Tanya Coley, and Miss Olive Pellington. And as you can see, they are awesome and they're in the front line of actually creating history. And why I say creating history is because we need to write our own story. We need to do our own narrative. We need to actually be the ones that are actually leading from the front because many people write other stories, your stories, and say it's your story, but we need to write our story and make it our history as well, mm. setting the stage. Thank you very much and see you on The Silver Show. Thank you so much for joining us on The Silver Show. And uh, of course, what I'd like you to do is to like the videos, share the videos, and subscribe to the channel. Let people know about it. But important thing is also to comment. Let us get your comment, let us get your views, so we can understand how to even please you better, ladies and gentlemen. So as I said, share, like, subscribe. Ah, thank you, I saw you there. You subscribe and you shared. Thank you so much, see you next time.